Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Jess and this is Girl Tech Connect where I like to create content on being a self-taught web developer, minimalism, and programming the life that I wanna live. So if that sounds interesting to you, please consider subscribing. And without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Before you start your coding journey, I really feel like it's important to ask yourself these set of questions and really think about the things that I'm gonna talk about in today's video. I feel like if I would have thought about these things and talked about these things with myself at the very beginning of my journey, I would have gotten a lot further faster. That's just me. So hopefully these things will help you as well on your journey. The first thing I wanna talk about today is what is your why? Why do you wanna start learning how to code? I think that this is important with anything that you start in life, any kind of journey you go on in life, is to always have a clear understanding of why you want to do it. When I first started learning how to code, I didn't really have a why, I just kind of fell into it and I liked the idea of being able to customize things and make things beautiful, but that wasn't enough to keep me on the straight and narrow path when I got to points where I got frustrated and wanted to quit. And because of that, I didn't have anything to really stand on that kept me going. And it was easy for me to just push my studies to the side and forget about coding altogether many times. At this time in my journey, I finally figured out my whys. What are my values when it comes to why I wanna learn how to code? First and foremost, my children. Of course, I see this as an opportunity to progress myself, which will obviously in turn progress and benefit them. I also want to be able to look at a piece of code and know it just as fluently as I know the English language. I wanna be able to look at that and be like, okay, that says X, Y, Z, just as I would if I were reading a book with English text in it. Another reason is because I want to be able to create valuable resources for you guys, especially my women out there, because we need more women in the tech space, especially minority women. Um, and so in order to get there, I have to progress in those skill sets. And because I have those specific core values, those specific whys, I'm able to think about those in moments that I feel like quitting and giving up and I can revert back to them and say, you know what, no, this is bigger than me. This is why I want to do this. Another question I would ask myself is, do you really love tech or are you doing this for other reasons? Now there's no right or wrong answer when it comes to this question, but I do think that you have to have some sort of level of interest when it comes to learning how to code, because like anything else, if I go into a science room and I have no interest in learning how to mix, the, mix these chemicals, I'm more inclined, my, my odds of quitting are much higher than they would be if I had some inkling of interest in what I was learning. So I think that it's very important to really hone in and think about it and be honest with yourself about it. Do you wanna do it for the money? Do you see it as the popular thing to do? This is the popular tech, you know, tech space is the popular growing industry right now. Or are you someone who has never seen yourself doing anything besides tech? There's nothing else that appeals to you outside of tech. Really focusing in on that and thinking about it will help you in the long run. I think that by thinking about your interest in learning how to code when it comes to the tech space, learning that up front is going to help you in the long run because you can then say, okay, I'm not very interested in code, but I don't want you to give up on the tech space altogether if this is where you wanna be because there are a ton of other things that you can do that don't require learning how to code. Now, of course, there are tons of different resources here on YouTube where YouTubers have created content on different tech positions that you can get, the salaries, all those different informational pieces to help you decide whether or not you want to be someone in the tech space who actually learns how to program or do other things. And I highly recommend checking some of those videos out. I plan on making one really soon where I talk about it, but really figuring out your interest in tech up front will help you in the long run decide exactly where you fit in in the tech industry and how to go about honing in on whatever skills you need from that point on so that you don't feel like you're really like wasting your time or, you know, getting frustrated and giving up on tech altogether. Another big question or thought that I would give to you is to be honest with yourself. What I mean by this is being honest with yourself about how disciplined you're gonna be if you want to go the self-taught route. Not everybody is cut out to do self-taught things. Some people need more structure, some people need an actual curriculum, which there is nothing wrong with that, but really weigh the pros and cons of boot camps, traditional schooling, and being self-taught, because I believe there's pros and cons to all three, but really decide what that looks like for you. Are you disciplined enough? 
is this the best route? Because it may not be. And you may need to go to a boot camp, which is perfectly okay. You may need to go to four years of schooling, which is perfectly fine. Um, but being honest with yourself and not just doing it because other people are doing it or because you feel like it's easier. Because let me tell you, honestly, I don't think that it's easier to be self-taught because you are holding yourself accountable for everything that you do. You don't have a curriculum, you don't have a roadmap. Everything that you do is created solely off of what you research and what you pull from others. So in a boot camp and traditional schooling, you have um, some type of curriculum, some type of roadmap, some type of we're gonna go from here to here with your skill sets. With self-taught, you are on your own. Your successes and failures are determined by you. So really, truly get honest with yourself and have those conversations with yourself and determine if that is something that you'll be okay with. And if you are, then get started. Another thing to get honest about is how much time do you really have to do this? I believe being a self-taught developer or actually a programmer in general, you have to put in the practice. You need to be coding every single day. And at the very least, and I've heard a lot of other programmers say this, you need to be coding at least an hour a day. If you can do more, great. I'm trying to find time in my super crazy days to get more coding time in. You know, I'm trying to see how I can wake up earlier but not be so tired that I, you know, don't want to stay up at night where I could be getting some stuff done. So really be honest with yourself and think about how much time you have to dedicate to this because it is a dedication it will be a sacrifice you don't get anything without sacrifice <laughs> so think about how you're going to go about your time um, you won't learn how to program overnight there are programmers who are still learning how to program because technology is forever changing so just think about that think about the fact that this is going to take time don't get frustrated with yourself you're going to get there but you have to be honest about how much time you are going to be willing to put into it. The last and final thing that I want to talk about is probably the most important one to me out of all of these. That is not allowing imposter syndrome, self-doubt and other people's opinions to get in your way and keep you from things that are already yours. This is a journey like any other journey and along journeys, you'll get bumps and bruises. You'll have failures and successes. But don't ever allow anything to distract you from the things that you truly want to do because those things are for you, but it's up to you to go get them. When you're in certain rooms, um, I'm guilty of this still sometimes, but when you're in certain rooms, don't ever feel and question why you're there. Don't question if you should be there and how did you get there because there's a reason why you're there. Somebody saw something in you that you may not even have seen in yourself and that is why you're there. So when you get into these spaces and you get your first job because you're going to, own it. Do the best that you can and just try to keep that self, you know, sabotage and the imposter syndrome back way, way back in the back of your brain because it's not going to benefit you at all. Always remember that no matter what you're doing, you're gonna get positive energy, you're gonna get negative energy from people. People are always going to have their opinions, whether they're good or bad, but that is just what it is. It's their opinion and it should never be a determining factor when you are making decisions for you. When you set out on your journey, whether it's self-taught, boot camps, traditional schooling, you're gonna have people that may or may not agree with what you're doing, but as long as you know what you're doing, you have your why, you know your interest, you know that nothing can stop you, then you will succeed. And that's not to say that you won't have failures. We all have failures, especially as programmers, you're going to have failures, you're going to have bugs that you may not be able to fix or things that you broke and you don't know where to start. But the thing is, use those as stepping stools, use those as learning factors. Don't use those as things that actually weigh you down. So let's take our failures and use them as lessons and not weights. I wanna leave you guys with this. Always remember that it is you against you every time. What I mean by that is that your journey is yours. Don't compare it to anyone else's because you never know what that person had to go through to get to where they are today. You never know what doors were closed in that person's face before one opened. So don't take what you see on someone's social media as that's what it's been for them the whole entire time. 
take your day by day, take your step by step, and I promise you, you will get to where you wanna be. So anytime that you're feeling self-doubt or you're feeling, feeling like you're comparing yourself a lot, just kind of take a step back, regroup, remember your why, remember all these things we talked about today, and hopefully that will get you right back on your path to becoming a successful developer, whether it be self-taught, bootcamp, traditional schooling, or not coding at all and you just want to be in the tech space or you take this information and apply it to any other industry or any other goals you have i hope that this helps you i hope that you have a better sense of some things that maybe you need to put in place mentally before you start on a self-taught developer journey um, this is not something that everybody has to do but i definitely feel like it would have helped me a lot more if i would have done it first and I hope that it does the same for you. As always, you guys know I love thanking you for making it to this point in the video because it lets me know that you watched the whole thing. You're awesome, I love you. And if you found this video helpful and you liked it, please don't forget to like the video because it helps me, it helps the channel, it helps me know what to create for you guys and it helps me reach more people so that I can help others. And until next time, I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.